Good evening. Welcome to What I Lie to You, the show all about the art of lying. On Lemax team tonight, we have the star of Doc Martin, a show whose enormous success has had the Cornish locals high sixing each other. It's Martin Clunes. <laughs> And uh, another very successful comedian actor who's uh, even been awarded an OBE? Yes. For what? <laughs> I mean, I like the Kumars as much as the next man. But an OBE? <laughs> it's Sanjeev Bhaskar! <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team, a presenter who once interviewed Tony Blair about the Iraq War and his decision to remove Saddam Hussein from office. Not the most light-hearted moment, an all-star Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> it's Fern Britton! <laughs> and the man who puts the E into Richard Grant. It's Richard E. Grant! <laughs> right, let's get started then with uh, round one. It's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to separate the truth from the lies. And Sanjeev oh. is first up. I once had to ask Michael Winner to calm down after I crashed into his car. <laughs> Right. Um, was this, w at the time when you asked him to calm down, had his brilliant Eshaw campaign already hit our screens and so it, you know, seemed like an apposite thing to say? Or was this years ago an angrier Michael Winner who still had a film career? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, well, I think it was before the, the adverts. Right, and so maybe that's what gave him the idea. Quite, quite possibly. What car was he driving? He was driving a Bentley. What colour? Uh, I don't know, it was dark. Well, it was at night, or it was a dark Bentley? <laughs> Both. Both. It was dark. That's why it blended in. Right. That's why I hit him. Are you so sure he had a car at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean I just hit him up the arc? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was once a very large man. <laughs> what was your car? I was in a Vauxhall Cavalier. And oh, where, did, where, did you, where did the crash happen? Yes. It was uh, Kensington High Street in London. Who was in the car with him? Uh, no one, I think. He Describe was driving himself. Whole... He was driving himself, yeah. yeah. Describe the whole incident. Mm. Uh, it was raining and it was dark and I braked. And the guy in front of me braked very suddenly and I went into the back of him. So you both get out of the car. At this point, you're presumably quite surprised to see that it's Michael Winner. I, I started laughing. Right. <laughs> and yet, what was his response? He said, uh, he said, that bump is about a thousand pounds. <laughs> Then Michael Winner got out of the car. And, uh, <laughs> he said, uh, I agree with the first chat. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he, I started laughing and he just said, uh, uh, This isn't very funny. And I said, I think it is. <laughs> Did you exchange all the details? Uh, I think I gave him my details. I don't think he gave Did you include his. the OBE in your details? <laughs> I didn't have one at the time. This was pre-decoration. <laughs> was it this incident that led to your being awarded the OBE? <laughs> <laughs> because I think you should have got a knighthood. Well, <laughs> but you have to kill him for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't have a passenger with him because he's very friendly with Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving down the road when <laughs> we felt a prang in the arse. <laughs> I looked around. Who do you bloody think it was? <laughs> Only Sanjeev Bhaskar, pre-decoration. <laughs> what do you think, David's team? Mm. Michael Winner does have a driver. Always talks about the driver in his reviews. Well, you think it's true? Well, I'm so gullible. I think yes. Oh, did he? Oh, really? Well, it well, happens. <laughs> There's something about that he would have a chauffeur or someone else in the car. So, on the basis I have the casting vote. I'm going to say lie. Saying that it's a lie. Yeah. OK. Sanjeev Bhaskar, OBE. <laughs> Are you telling the truth or telling a lie? I'm telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's true. Sanjeev did once have to ask Michael Winner to calm down after he crashed into his car. <laughs> it was a serious accident, but a couple of good panel beaters and some light touching up, and Michael looked as good as new. <laughs>
Fern, it is you that is next. I had a job as a postman, but left after a week because I couldn't ride the bike. B Mac, what do you think? What, when was this? Uh, when I was a student. Oh, not just after this morning. <laughs> <laughs> did they provide a bike or did you have your own bike? They provide a bike. And you couldn't ride it? No. Why couldn't you ride it? Because the basket on the front that you put the letters in doesn't turn when you turn the handlebars, so you think you're probably going straight on, but you're not. You're trying to turn right, and you think, I'm scared, and then you fall off. Sorry, what decade, what decade are we talking basket about? Basket on the... <laughs> basket on the front? How old were you at the time? Um, 18, so 1933. <laughs> <laughs> She's exaggerating. 34, <laughs> OK. My wife has a, has a bike with a high basket at the front. Sometimes I'll pop-up, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might pop up into the basket, you know. <laughs> I'm doing Ronnie Corbett. I might <laughs> pop up and admire the view. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> so you lasted a week. Good. You lasted. Don't encourage him. <laughs> I'm just glad that basket wasn't big enough to fit Terry Wogan in. Don't. <laughs> so, how long? You're a week. Just one week is... No! <laughs> Oh, I feel it's coming on. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you, are you edging anywhere closer to... to Suicide, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do after that? What was your next job? <coughs> Fern? Good question. You seem to be right. <laughs> Your face went to screen saver, then. Just jiggle my mouse, I'll come back. Um, oh, that's... <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> um, I worked in a sweet shop. Do so what do you guys think? Martin thinks it's true. Martin thinks it's true. Yeah. Are you basing that on anything than a 50-50 guess? I'm basing it on because I didn't think it was when you started. You seemed hesitant. But then yeah. the confidence and the fullness of your answers convinced me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, that's probably the most polite answer we've had on the show so <laughs> The bit I don't understand is how the basket doesn't go the same way as well, the... Well, that's what she didn't understand. That's what let her down over the whole arrangement was the <laughs> faulty bloody bicycle. Go on, go with your science. You think it's not true? No. OK, it's time to make a guess. Well, I th I, what do we think? What was your... Summary? I've told you! Well, I didn't listen. <laughs> Jesus, this is dragging on, isn't it? You were a bit like Doc Martin then when you got a bit cross, wasn't you? Yeah. yeah. We saw that side of him, didn't we? It was quite exciting. <laughs> it was like watching Doc Martin without having to watch it. <laughs> I liked you in Inspector Morse. Do you remember when you went, you're a damn fool, Morse? Do you remember that? I also called him Cheese Inspector, but I said it really quickly, so no, and they left it in. Cheese Inspector? <laughs> For was friends, it? when uh, I got a job, I called Love Joy, Love Juice, as well. Did you? Oh, I love Juice. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's take a guess then. Oh. I think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah, I don't think it's true. I have to make the decision then, so I'll go with Sanjeev and say that that is not true. You think it's not true? You think it's a lie? Okay, so Fern Britain, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. Fern did have a job as a postman, but she left after a week because she couldn't ride the bike. Uh, part of the problem is that the wheels on a post office bike are larger than normal. That's according to a spokesperson. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that is a beauty. <laughs> right, uh, Martin Clues, you're up next. Right. <laughs> I have actually been fired by Alan Sugar. Oh, there we are. Right, OK. Interesting. So why were you working for Alan Sugar? Uh, I wasn't directly working for him. I was working for a catering company uh, when I first left drama school, like a lot of good drama students, black trousers, white shirt, handing around the drinks and the canapes. And I turned too quickly and knocked three glasses of red wine, to, I remember everything, two glasses of white wine and four canapes down a lady's top. And the so, lady was? Angry. Cross. <laughs> <laughs> No idea. I had no idea who he was until years later when I saw him on the telly and I thought, that's the two fired me. <laughs> so he was, was he standing next to Yes, him? yes, it was his do. He was it the was... host of the do and I was summarily dispersed of. 
dispersed, dispensed with. Dispensed of or dispensed, dispensed with. Dispersed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tossed off. <laughs> What's the name of the catering company? Oh, God, Mayflower. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were the one that remembered it. Yes, I know. <laughs> Martin Clunes, well done. <laughs> yes. This is where I live, well done. <laughs> so what, so she was cross and he was she standing was, to next honest, to her? She was just uh, wet and dirty as I remember, but he was... He... <laughs> No, she was just busy with dealing with, you know, worrying about her clothes, and his, his, his summary firing of me was a sort of display for her benefit as much so as So he anything. was right there and he did he it was, himself? He was, yes, 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 yes. And he used he, his he a lovely man. You fought. Did he do that? Uh, like yeah, yeah. Like Rocky Balboa, yeah. I think, right? <laughs> You fought. Yeah, you fought. Fight. Exactly. You, oh, you, you fought, Edwin. <laughs> Please, that's a very good Rocky Balboa, but doesn't he really sound a bit more like this? I look very bad, 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 I look very bad. What did he actually say? Oh, God, I can't remember. There was anger, there was shouting. I d he didn't swear, but he, um, he made me look stupid. But, cunningly, I already looked stupid. <laughs> <laughs> David, we can. I'll tell you. Mayflower came so swiftly; it was brilliant. I think Mayflower sounds very much like a sort of outside catering company. But do you think that if you're the guest who's been spilt all over, wet and dirty, that he would have turned <laughs> round and said, "You're fired"? I, well, I, it's a very nasty thing to do because it's only an accident. But you, you were twenty. Only, you were full of apologies. At of this course, moment. I was full of apologies. I had some spillage on me, but I didn't, you know, bang didn't on about. Didn't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> That was probably a wise course not to go, what are you doing, you stupid <laughs> bitch? <laughs> Standing right in my way! He's telling the truth. You think he is telling the truth? I think he is telling the truth. Do, it, but think? he is That's... a brilliant actor. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, he's you an are. actor. <laughs> I mean, with the greatest respect, we're not talking about Robert De Niro, are we? <laughs> it's Martin Clunes. I mean... Is he going to do Robert De Niro now? I can't do him. Oh. Um, <laughs> Come on, have a stab. Have I got Pacino for you? No, I said no, Robert, De said Robert De Niro. Come on, cocky. <laughs> That's all I can do. That was a monkey. <laughs> Robert De Niro has a monkey. <laughs> He's very versatile. He could do a monkey yeah. that well. What's that? Al Pacino? OK. <laughs> Tom like Jones? De Niro, that, isn't it? With longer arms. <laughs> no, Al, Al Pacino. Al Pacino is... <laughs> OK, Pacino, OK? What do you got? <laughs> That's Columbo. <laughs> It is a very good Ronnie Corbett. Yeah. <laughs> so who's who's guessing? Who's who's? If, if, if that ends up in the show, I'm gone. Um, come on, everybody. Let's have let's have a guess. Well, I think you you instinctively think it's true. I'm going to go with true. Well, I haven't got a, a clue. So. I can only go with fern. Uh, well, can I think yes. Uh, let's go Lovely. with you. Oh, okay, right. we're going with fern, and you're saying that it's true. Martin Clunes, our greatest living actor. <laughs> were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling a porcupine. <laughs> yes, Martin was telling a lie, and, and why? Why should we be surprised? He is a wonderful actor. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, David's team uh, have just one point. Lee's in the lead with three. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Ken. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so, Richard, first of all, what, what is Ken to you? This is Ken. He produced my record, a dance version of a Shakespearean soliloquy. Right, OK. <laughs> Fern, how, how do you know Ken? This is Ken, and he and I are part of the same Morris dancing troupe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finally, David, what is your connection to Ken? Uh, th this is Ken, and Ken drives a steam engine and recently let me ride in the cab with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all know which is the favourite. <laughs> We'll start with uh, we'll start with Richard. He said it was a Shakespearean soliloquy. Yeah, uh, it was a version of Hamlet's "To Be or Not to Be." Chuck oh, it up. <laughs> chuck it, chuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And was was there rapping? Was there a bit of? <laughs> was there any? <laughs> Martin, not... you're really down with the kids. That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> not that I can is it the question? No. <laughs> the original or did you change the words? No, the words were as as is. As is? Yeah. How did it go? Can you do a bit? What sort of music was it? Was it was it was it lutes and you know Shakespearean styly or was there was it something more contemporary? Yeah, was it like lutes and harps and ting? It was. Was it? <laughs> it was garage and hip hop. Is together. it? Really? <laughs> Is it though? For real. Yeah. For real. For real. Well, there's certainly no doubting the hip hop credentials of <laughs> Lee's team. <laughs> and how did Ken convince you that that was a good idea? Uh, he asked me. <laughs> Is that no. all it takes for you, Richard? Yeah. yeah. How do you, you think, think I'm here? here? <laughs> <laughs> what was on the B side? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day or whop it up thee straight away? <laughs> <laughs> that is the right answer. <laughs> OK, uh, Fern, just remind us again. This is Ken, <clears throat> and we are part of the same Morris dancing troupe. Right, and how often do you do that? In the summer, it could be every weekend. It could be, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, how do you combine this with your TV commitments? <sighs> well, obviously, if I'm working, I don't go and do it, because there's a troupe of 12 of us. <laughs> <laughs> and where do, where do you do it? Where do you Morris? We Morris at the county shows. Can you, are you pretty good at Morris dancing? You know where this is leading, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so could we have a demonstration, Fern? At I all? would feel silly. Well, you're on the right show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, David. Um, remind us of yours again. Uh, uh, he said, drives a steam train, and he gave me a ride in his cab. Right. And how did this <laughs> crop up? Uh, it, it was. Uh... <laughs> you were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was at the um, it was at my brother's thirtieth birthday do, which was at uh, the Didcot Railway Museum. <laughs> there is nothing you've said so far that we doubt. <laughs> <laughs> right, and why did your brother choose that? Was it ironic? I think there was elements of irony and elements of genuine enjoyment, yeah. very much like this show. <laughs> How far did you go? If you can't, you can't go anywhere. It's a museum. Oh, so it's an internal journey. You can, go, you can go sort of, sort of a couple of hundred yards. Stop. A couple of hundred yards back. <laughs> and this is all in, within the building. No, no, no. It's out, outdoors, oh, but right. within the property. It doesn't. You don't access the national network because you just, <laughs> you, you just get in the way of the younger trains. <laughs> in such a terrible hurry. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, says the old steam chain. Why is everyone in such a rush? It's because the network's so terribly underfunded. <laughs> Say the trucks. <laughs> Who's this coming through? It's a young engine. Get out of my way, David. I've got important letters to deliver. Yeah. The engine's very angry, said David Mitchell. Ah. <laughs> I 
Can I tell? No, this is a hard one because they're all. I don't think it's remotely hard. Oh, which one is it? I think it's David. Why do you think it's David? Because she don't know Jack about Morris Townsend. <laughs> <laughs> He's never sung a song in his life. <laughs> <laughs> they might be bluffers. They might be bluffers. Yeah, well, we'll test them on the on the knowledge very quickly. Name some Morris Townsend equipment, please, Fern. I have the garters with the belts on. Now you're talking. I have, the... <laughs> <laughs> I have the white knickerbockers and the long socks. I have the wooden soled shoes. And I've got the big pole now. And. Now let's look at Ken. Hmm. Does Ken look like a Morris dancer? Yes or no? He sort of does, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He does. Does he look like he could drive a, a steam train? That's a definite big yes, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> does he look like a record producer? <laughs> not today. So what, are you, so what are you going for? What do you think? Well, it's not Richard. There's no conviction in what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> he's no conviction in the Spice Girls movie, but he did that. <laughs> See, I can't, I, can't, I can't see anything but a Morris dancer when I look at him. So now. you're thinking it's fun. I am increasing. You're see, thinking um, it's... If we could get a look at his hands, I'm sure we could see if he was. Would a you like to driver. see Ken's hands? Yes. Oh, look out! The oh. doctor's in. There we go. <laughs> there he comes. <laughs> He's a record producer. <laughs> Is that your final answer? They're not manual labourers' hands. So what is he? Well, I'll go with uh, Dr. Martin. Oh God, no, don't, not me. Take some Morris Dancing. You think it's Fern? Yeah. Let's you go think with it's Fern now? Well, then I'm going to have to go with the team. Say it's Fern. You're but saying it's Fern? It yeah. goes against so, yes. all my better judgment. All right, okay. Ken, would you please reveal your true identity? Yes, I'm Ken, and I produced a record with Richard E. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ken produced Richard's record, a dance version of a Shakespeare soliloquy. And as luck would have it, we've got a clip! Yay! Yay! Whether it is no way of mine, or to take arms against the sea. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Ken. Okay. Wow. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but also against the clock. And we start with... <coughs> Lee. There was a saying in my old school, if Lee Mack can pass his geography O-level, then anyone can. <laughs> it's eminently plausible, David, but is it true? Um, what did, I mean, in what way did it constitute a saying? I mean, well, I'm sure somebody could have said it. Yeah, it Does that make it a saying? I'll be honest with you, it wasn't on the coat of arms <laughs> right. at the school. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it, was, it was said for a few years after I left. Mm. What was it about your approach to geography that led your geography teacher to think you were pretty much the worst person at geography on Earth? Well, because we used to do mock... Uh, you do mock O-levels the year before, and I failed it badly. So they said, you're going in the CSE class, which was for the kids who used to hit nails with hammers. <laughs> and my mum went down to the school and said, he just failed it, and with that extra chance, he'll pass it. And they looked at her sad little crying eyes, and they... <laughs> yeah. And that yeah, yeah. coal on her back, and they said... Yeah. I trust Tommy it. Mac, they said, we'll give him that one chance. Look, Lee, if this isn't being developed into a film, then you've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was the grade? The grade that I passed with? Yeah. C. So if you had stayed oh, yes, in that the... that is a grade. Yes. 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 <laughs> Listen, this is important. Right. Yes. I doubt that, but carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're single. <laughs> oh. Lie. 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 Uh, Lee. Lie, Lee. What? No, that's the name of your Vietnamese bride. For <laughs> <laughs> even, even as I speak, is at home right now, banging against the inside door of the airing cupboard. <laughs> I'll be home soon, my sweet. 
Lee. <laughs> Lie? It is, in fact, true. Ah! Yeah. True. <laughs> Next. <laughs> David Mitchell. Here we go. <clears throat> I, of course, got a grade A degree in job. <laughs> What did you say? I, you know what I said. I said it wrong. Just read it out. <laughs> <laughs> for six months, I wrote horoscopes for a women's magazine. <laughs> there we are. Please. Right. What was the women's magazine? Got mm. him at hurdle number one. <laughs> <laughs> Top Sante. What? <laughs> what women's magazine is that? That's a, mag that's a magazine, isn't it? Have women's... you heard of Top Sunset? I, I, no, it's like a Christmas mag. What is it? You've not heard of it? Never. Top Sunset. Have you heard of it, Richard? No. Have you, have heard, you of heard of it? Oh, yes. There we are. Thank yes. goodness. <laughs> We've not heard of it, have we? If you'd have said. Oh, it's not aimed at you, is it? Frankly. Well, it depends how annoying he's being. Well. <laughs> 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 so, what, what is Top Sunset? It's a sort of magazine that you see in dentists' waiting rooms. How long ago was this? I think about a year and a bit after I'd graduated. So the, bl the bleak um, years, as we call it. Was it the only contribution you made to this august publication? It, it, it was, yes. Why did they think you were the man to, to do this job? Uh, well, a, a friend of mine... Lying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it for them and um, they, they, they basically just, for 50 quid a week, they just needed you know, some vague text that they, they wouldn't be held to, saying a, a, a period of transition is coming, but it's time not to end hope, but still to be wary. You know, that's it. <laughs> 50 pound a week for six months, once a week, doesn't know anything about star signs, no, nothing that would make them go, David's the man. No, because I shouldn't be doing you it. are quite articulate. They should have got a qualified charlatan, but no. <laughs> So, Lee, it's time to take a guess. Is David telling us the truth, do you think, or could this be a lie? Oh, it's a fib. He's lying. Uh, all right. He said it with conviction. Yes. I'm saying yeah. he's lying. What do you say? Yeah, I think he's a liar. We're so, all... you're saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, truth or lie? It's a lie. Oh, it was a lie. <laughs> it was um, a humongous lie. And now, I just say, in my defence, obviously, I know nothing about horoscopes, but the thing you most disbelieve, there's definitely a magazine, isn't there? Called yes. Top yes. Sunset. Yes. yes, there is. I thought I'd sit here and name a woman's magazine. I couldn't think of a thing. <laughs> and one popped into my head, and frankly, I want a medal. <laughs> I think you do very well. And that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that it's a narrow victory for Lee by six <laughs> points to five. <laughs> But, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Martin Clunes. Oh, yes. Martin Clunes, who uh, I'm also starting to think isn't actually a real doctor, and perhaps I shouldn't have let him examine my testicles before the show. <laughs>